This is a list of every single course I've taken in my engineering degree, and in this video, I'm gonna be ranking them from easiest to hardest. I'll be ranking these courses based on four categories. How difficult the course material is to understand, how many hours I need to study for the course, how difficult the exams are, and how useful the course is in the real world after you graduate. So the tiers we're gonna play with are as follows. First, we have the S tier. These are the courses that are gonna either make or break engineering. Without these courses, you're not a mechanical engineer. It doesn't matter how hard they are, we need to be really, really good at those courses. Next, we have A, which are classes that are both easy and essential. Then we have B, which are courses that aren't as easy, but are still really important to build a somewhat strong engineering foundation. We've got C, which are courses that are honestly pretty easy and straightforward, but are kind of useless. Next is D, which are courses that are somewhat useful and nice to know, but honestly aren't worth the time that you have to put in. Finally, we have the F tier. These are the courses that honestly make you want to cry and reconsider why you even chose to be an engineer to begin with they're just hard for no reason no matter how much work or effort you put in the professors will always find a way to make these particular courses hard confusing and make you fail let's start with the first course chemistry for engineers it basically just teaches you a slightly more advanced version of the chemistry you already learned in high school since it's relatively easy but it's kind of useless for a mechanical engineer since i didn't use any of the stuff i learned in that class for my upper year courses or even in real life i gotta give it a c next we have linear algebra it's honestly a very different way of looking at math but it's something that you use a lot in your upper year engineering courses and if you have a good teacher it's honestly not that hard and the exam problems are usually quite similar to the homework problems so for that reason, I gotta give it a B. Next, we have Calculus 1. This course just basically summarizes all the calculus you learn in high school. The exams are pretty straightforward and this class always has one of the highest class averages in first year. So for that reason, gotta give it an A. Next, we have this Mechanical Engineering Practice course. It has some very useless topics and some really interesting topics that are actually very practical for real life engineering. Some of the practical stuff includes CAD, GDNT, and a bunch of other things that you actually use on the job. Some assignments were boring, but it was honestly relatively easy overall. So for that reason, gotta give it an A. Physics in first year is honestly really useful and it's very similar to what you learn in high school so you don't learn a lot of new concepts so for that reason you'd expect it to be an easy course but you'd be wrong everything you learn in that physics course isn't that much different from what you learned in the past but the problems the exam questions the homework are just so much harder than you'd expect it's honestly really hard for absolutely no reason so i gotta give it a d on my tier list this circuits course is honestly pretty easy and for a lot of people who choose to get into more electromechanical jobs it's very useful for them so simply i gotta give it a b next we have calculus 2 the exams in this course are pretty straightforward Nothing is really too difficult and a lot of the exam questions are actually very similar to what you'd find in your homework problems. So for that reason, I gotta give it a B. I'm not necessarily giving it an A because it's honestly not very useful in upper year courses. Calc 1 is what's more useful in your upper year courses. ME 101 is the first programming course you take as a mechanical engineering student. It's very basic coding, so it's nothing too hard. I think it's pretty useful if you decide to kind of switch your careers into something more software oriented later on. So for that reason, gotta give it an A. Next is this material science class. A lot of what you learn in this class is stuff that you get asked in mechanical engineering job interviews. So it's a very, very important class to understand really well. Also, what you learn in this class isn't too difficult. The concepts are pretty easy to grasp and the math in it isn't too complex. So honestly, for that reason, it deserves the S tier. This concludes all my first year courses. Now I'll start talking about my second year courses, starting off with Calc 3. This course is like doing math, but in 3D. I don't know if that makes sense. It's honestly really not that useful and isn't worth the time that you have to put in. So I gotta give it a D rating. Next up is a statistics course all about collecting and analyzing data. It's pretty straightforward, but honestly not that useful for a mechanical engineer. So it deserves a C rating. Next is this mechanics of materials course. That's all about understanding how strong certain materials are and how much load they can withstand without breaking. When you first learn it, it can be confusing, but after you do enough practice, you really get the hang of it and it becomes pretty straightforward. And honestly, the exam isn't too bad because a lot of the exam questions are very similar to the homework problems. It's also very useful for mechanical engineering job interviews because they'll ask a lot of questions from that course. So for that reason, it deserves the S tier. Next, we move on to another material science course that builds upon the one you took in your first year. The one you take in your first year, if you remember, I gave it an S tier, but this one, I gotta give it an F. Let me explain why. In material science, it goes into a lot more detail than you really need, so it's only useful if you plan on pursuing a master's or a PhD in like materials engineering. Also, there's so much memorization involved in this course and very little mathematical application. So it makes it very hard to predict what the exam is gonna be like, which makes the exam very difficult. And the professor can just throw whatever he wants at you. Next, we move on to ME269, which is another circuits course where we learn all about motors and other electrical parts. Honestly, it's pretty useful and I have no complaints. It's easy, the exam is straightforward, so it deserves an A. I wouldn't give it an S though because you don't use a lot of what you learn on the job and mechanical engineering job interviews don't usually ask you stuff in this course. Moving on to ordinary differential equations, I like to think of this course as another math course because it teaches you how to solve 
really complicated equations. There's usually a process that you just follow over and over again to solve the complicated equations, so there's not much room for a professor to trick you in this kind of course. As long as you follow the process, all the questions seem to be pretty straightforward and it's honestly not too hard to learn, so for that reason, I gotta give it an A. Wow, I realized I've given a lot of A's so far. I'm pretty generous. Next up, we have dynamics, and without hesitation, I gotta give this course an F. The material you learn in this course isn't hard, but the exam is deadly. You get asked questions that make absolutely no sense. Like for example, this is what a question in one of my exams for this course looked like. You have a space shuttle that takes off at point P and must turn around the Earth on a circular path and end up passing through point A. What's the speed of the shuttle at point A and how long does it take to get there? Pretty confusing, right? I'm not done yet. Keep in mind that 300,000 kilometers away from the Earth, there's a moon, and you must determine the increase in velocity that the space shuttle must undergo so the orbit goes from a circular orbit to an elliptical orbit and not crash into the moon. The crazy part about this question is in order to solve it, you don't need any fancy physics or fancy math. You can solve it with basic grade 12 or grade 11 physics. But the way you use that kind of physics to solve it is so extra and it's just so unnecessary, it honestly triggers me just thinking about it. ME220 is another mechanics of materials course where you go into more detail on understanding what it takes to make a material fail and how to prevent failure. It's actually pretty straightforward stuff, but the exam is excruciatingly long. I gotta give it a D rating. Next, we move on to thermodynamics. The exam tends to be pretty straightforward but it's not as important as some of the other engineering courses out there. Depending on your professor, it could also be pretty challenging, so that's why I gotta give it a B rating. Next up is this digital logic course where we learn about PLC programming, how computers think, and their unique logic. This course starts out pretty easy, but it gets really, really difficult and confusing after midterms, so for that reason, it deserves a C. This concludes all the courses I took in my second year. Let's move on to my third year of engineering. Starting off my third year with Advanced Engineering Mathematics. I think the name implies how difficult this course is. It's also not very useful, so it's honestly not worth the effort that you have to put in in order to understand it. The issue I find with this course is that its execution is pretty poor, and you'll find yourself just memorizing equations and algorithms in order to solve questions without actually understanding where these equations came from, why they're important, or even what they mean. So for that reason, I gotta give it a D rating. I'm in 321. This is a course that teaches you the physics behind mechanical parts like belts, gears, nuts, bolts, etc. So it's a very useful course. It definitely wasn't the easiest, but with enough practice you'll get the hang of it, so for that reason, it deserves a B rating. Manufacturing is a very useful and pretty straightforward course. You learn about all the different types of processes out there that we can use to make very different types of materials. For example, we learn about what kind of process we can use to make plastics, or different types of metals, or glass. The exam was pretty easy, and the math in this course is pretty simple as well. And a lot of the mechanical engineering job interviews ask you questions from this course, so that's why I gotta give it an S tier. This is my first fluids mechanics course, and it's honestly pretty difficult. The concepts in general aren't too bad to understand and can be pretty straightforward, but the exam is just pretty difficult, and a lot of students, myself included, struggled with it. No matter how much practice you do, there always seems to be something else that you don't know. So for that reason, I gotta give it a D rating. Moving on, we have the second thermodynamics course that I take, and it's honestly pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy to understand. Understand. There are no tricks or confusing concepts in this course. It's just very simple concepts and very straightforward mathematical equations. Just do the assigned homework maybe two or three times and you're all set for the exam. It's honestly a great course overall and you can probably learn the entire course the day before the exam if I were to be completely honest with you. So for that reason, it deserves a strong A. Mechanical design sort of combines the material science and mechanics of materials that you learned in previous years. So it gives you a pretty strong foundation on how to design things so that they don't fail. Super useful content here because it teaches you how to design things for a real world job and it's pretty straightforward to learn as well. If you've made it to this course so far in your third year, then you shouldn't have any issues understanding it. Although the exams can be long sometimes, it is doable, so for that reason, I gotta give it an A tier. Heat transfer teaches you a lot about how to control heat and how it moves from one area to another. You can expect to get mechanical engineering job interview questions from this course, so it's very important to have a solid understanding of it. It's also not very hard and the concepts you learn in this course are pretty simple and kind of repetitive. But that's a good thing because that means it's easy to notice patterns in this course which makes the exam pretty easy and that's why it deserves STR status. Control systems is the type of course for people interested in pursuing the robotics or automation route, but it just wasn't for me. For that reason, this course didn't really resonate well with me. However, the course content isn't too difficult provided you're able to stay on top of all the homework problems and all the assignments that you have. Luckily, the topics and problems have a very systematic approach, but I would still give it a D status. This is because you need to really be able to see the bigger picture of the entire course in order to fully understand it. This is the second fluid mechanics course, and it was honestly pretty difficult because it was very, very theoretical. 
theoretical, or at least more theoretical than all the other engineering courses that I've taken. But to be honest, as long as you complete all your practice homework problems and clarify all the questions you have with your professor or TA, the exam tends to be pretty reasonable. This is a kind of course that requires frequent practice for you to be able to understand what's being taught. So don't be surprised if you have to spend your weekends doing a lot of the homework questions for this in order to understand what it is you're being taught. So for that reason, it kind of deserves a D rating. ME380 is a project course and how hard it is depends on your professor because they basically pick the one project you work on for the entire term. And that project may or may not be of interest to you. There's no actual content in this course that's useful. Everyone that goes to this class doesn't actually pay attention to the content taught in it. The majority of the time is spent writing reports about the different stages of the design process rather than actually learning how to design something that works and is useful. Also grading in this entire course is really inconsistent between the professors and TAs so it can honestly be a GPA killer. Overall the course ends up feeling like a huge waste of time in an already intense semester so it deserves an F. MSI 261 is financial management for engineers. The concepts in this course are actually pretty simple and the math we use in it is also really easy compared to the math in other engineering courses. Most of the math in this course is actually pretty simple multiplication from like grade 10. You also get to learn a little bit about financial literacy and it can be boring at times but it's honestly a bird course at the end of the day. It's the type of course where you can really study the day before the exam and you'll be fine so for that reason it deserves an A. So far I've talked about all the engineering courses that I took in my first three years of engineering that were mandatory. In my fourth year all my courses were electives and they were optional and my fourth year honestly kind of felt like a victory lap so there's no point of talking about them here but looking at the final tier list here here's what you should keep in mind the courses in the S tier are very important and you should have a solid understanding of them no matter how hard you think they are the courses in the A and B tier are easier engineering courses and don't necessarily require as much effort as the ones in the C and D tier the ones in C and D will usually require you to put more work in on the weekends or in the holidays for you to fully understand them. Finally, the FTR courses are just a lost cause in my opinion. No matter how much work you put in, you will always find yourself falling behind or confused or annoyed in this class. You should know that what I talked about for the courses in this video is mainly my own opinion, but it is backed up by what other students in my class thought as well and what the class average for the midterms and exams for each course was as well. You should also realize that a big part of how hard a course is really depends on your professor. A really good teacher can make a very difficult course easy and understandable and a really bad teacher can make the simplest course completely confusing and out of this world. So keep that in mind but anyways if you're curious to know what my engineering grades were like for the courses I just mentioned check out this video and if you're curious to know what engineering exams actually look like check out this video. Anyways peace!